Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Echo Live. We are here again today with another really exciting virtual planetarium program, which is pretty fitting. We talked a little bit about gravity yesterday on our episode of Echo Live. We were visited by an expert in physics, Raul, and he was here to talk to us all about how physics and gravity come into play when we are trying to launch a rocket like the one you see behind me in my virtual background. Um, behind me in my virtual background, a couple people asked in the comments yesterday, they asked, what exactly is this? This is actually a real photo of the rocket that was supposed to be launched yesterday out of Kennedy Space Center in Florida. This is the first rocket launch that's scheduled um, on a commercial level. So SpaceX, which is a private company, actually designed the rocket. This is um, a Falcon 9 rocket with a Crew Dragon um, launch module attached to it. Um, and this is kind of a collaborative effort between NASA and SpaceX, which is a very historic moment. It's the first time that we are launching astronauts or NASA astronauts out of U.S. soil in almost 10 years since the last space shuttle mission ran in 2011. Now, the launch didn't actually go off yesterday. We did not actually have liftoff um, with our NASA astronauts. There was all sorts of weather conditions. We talked a little bit about this yesterday that had to be met in order for us to proceed with launch, in order to make sure that we were doing so safely um, and that the astronauts had their best chance of making it to the International Space Station um, totally safe. Uh, there were about 12 or 11 or 12 criteria that have to be met, and that's just talking about weather. We talked about them a little bit yesterday. Um, they're very long and very wordy, but there was kind of a plethora of criteria that we did not meet yesterday um, in that launch window. So we were supposed to launch at 4.33 yesterday, and it didn't happen, but not to worry. We are going to try again, or NASA and SpaceX are going to try again in just a couple days. Um, the new launch is scheduled to take place this Saturday, May 30th at 3.22 p.m. Yesterday, we hosted a watch party here on our Facebook page. So if you are joining us on Facebook, we also shared the link on our YouTube channel as well. Um, a lot of you guys joined in. It was really cool to see so many familiar faces outside of our normal 2.30 to 3 o'clock Echo Live window. Um, but we had a watch party so that you could watch the launch with our NASA Solar System Ambassador, Paulette. Now, we're going to do this again. So if you didn't get a chance to join yesterday, or you did get a chance to join yesterday, but we're maybe a little disappointed that we didn't actually get to go ahead with the mission, not to worry, right? Just a couple more days that we might have to wait. Our next launch window is scheduled for 3.22 p.m. this Saturday. So if you'd like to watch that live with us so that you can have your answer questions answered um, by Paulette, who is actually here with us today, uh, we hope we'll see you back here on Saturday. Um, it was really cool, really exciting, and in honor of all these really exciting space events going on, Paulette has another awesome virtual planetarium show planned for us. So keep in mind, everybody, that you can ask Paulette questions throughout the program in the chat. I'll help to keep an eye on those. We'll make sure that Paulette gets to answer all of your really awesome, great questions that you always have. And with that, I'm going to let Paulette take it away. All right. Thanks, Anna. Yeah, yesterday we were really disappointed that the rocket didn't go off, but it was definitely for the astronauts' safety that they remained grounded. So hopefully this weekend we'll be able to watch a rocket launch. Um, like Anna said, uh, that's going to be uh, 3.22 p.m. on Saturday. If it doesn't launch on Saturday, hopefully it will launch on at 3 o'clock on Sunday. Unfortunately, it's an instantaneous launch window, so there really isn't much wiggle room on either side. If we had been able to wait there for another 10 minutes or so, the, the rocket could have actually gone off. But um, sometimes with space exploration and with, um, and, and with science, it doesn't go as planned. So we have to try again um, and make some changes. Now today, we are going to talk about some of our gas giants. We've already been able to visit Mercury and Phoenix. Uh, we were able to visit uh, Earth and Mars. And today, we're going to use our virtual planetarium to check out some of the giants in our solar system. So here we're still sort of focused on the Earth, but we're going to go to the largest planet in our solar system first. So what is the largest planet 
in our solar system? Who knows the answer to that one? Largest planet in our solar system. Hmm. If you know the answer, go ahead and type it in the chat. Once again, we're looking for the largest planet in the solar system. We have one answer already. We have somebody who said Saturn. Really great guess. Saturn is the second largest planet in our solar system. But Theo and um, our friends in Zoom have it correct. Jupiter. Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system. So we're going to head there first. So we're going to take off in our uh, rocket ship of the imagination and go to Jupiter. Again, I apologize if this program can be a little bit choppy sometimes. I did get a new computer, so it should be a little bit faster than it has been in the past. But here we are at our largest giant gas giant, Jupiter. Jupiter is made mostly out of hydrogen and helium, and it has a lot of storms on the surface of it. So we can see as we go around some of these storms, hurricanes, tornadoes, depending on how big they are. And on the surface of Jupiter, we have one of those huge storms, one giant hurricane on the surface, right over, keep going around, right over here. This is a giant red spot on the surface of Jupiter. And tell me, what do we call this giant red spot? I've given you a little bit of a hint by telling you it is a giant red spot on the surface. Giant red spot. What do we call that spot on Jupiter? We know that it's a storm or hurricane where winds gust over 400 miles per hour. Somebody guessed a crater and that's a fantastic guess. It does look a lot like some of the craters that we might see on the moon or Mercury, but this is actually, like I said, a giant storm or hurricane. And we call this something in particular. It's a giant red spot that we call the Great Red Spot. That's right, Kate had it right. So we call this the Great Red Spot. And that's how I was giving you the hint, the giant red spot. Because scientists, well, we're not super creative sometimes, especially in our naming convention. So this Great Red Spot, like I said, is a storm or hurricane on the surface of Jupiter. Let's go ahead and get a closer look at this Great Red Spot. It turns out that we can fit about four Earths inside of this great red spot or this giant hurricane right here. Winds gust to over 400 miles per hour and it is huge when we compare it to the Earth. Now, somebody asked a really fantastic question. Why do we have storms on other planets? And like I said, fantastic question. And Jupiter is actually made mostly out of hydrogen gas. And it turns out because of how big Jupiter is, the top up over here rotates at a different speed than the middle, which rotates at a different speed than the bottom. When all of those different gases rotate at different speeds, they get all twisted up and that spawns off the giant storms or hurricanes that we see. It also allows us to see these bands of color on the surface of Jupiter as well. So you can actually see that the winds here are going faster than the winds down over here. Now, someone said that the Great Red Spot is a giant storm that's been there for years and years, and that's true. Now, Galileo Galilei first put his telescope to the sky in the 1600s, and one of the first things that he looked at was the planet Jupiter with its great red spot. He also discovered a couple of other things around Jupiter. Jupiter is almost like a mini solar system of its own. Jupiter has many, many moons orbiting around it. Let me give you, let me give you a chance to guess. 
how many moons do you think there are orbiting around Jupiter? How many moons do we think there are orbiting around Jupiter? I'll give you a quick hint. Galileo Galilei found four of Jupiter's moons. So how many does it have around Jupiter? Someone says 63. We have another one that says 64 or 70, or sorry, 74, 73. You, um, some of you are very, very close. 74 is the closest, but Elizabeth, you got it. It's 79 moons orbiting around Jupiter. And we're probably going to discover even more of those moons in the future. Um, we just need better and better, better telescopes to be able to discover more and more. We actually discovered about 10 moons five years ago. So it has four moons that Galileo Galilei was able to discover. One of them is right over here. We have the moon called Io. If we take a closer look at Io, Io is a very interesting moon. It's the closest into Jupiter. So because of the massiveness of Jupiter, it actually has active volcanoes on the surface. Those active volcanoes can be seen right here. And when I look at Io, I kind of think of a pepperoni pizza. What do you think? So here we have Io, like I said, very, very close to Jupiter and has some active volcanoes on the surface. Then we have Europa, and we can fly to Europa right over here. So we have Io, Europa, I'm trying to go a little bit slower than, than normal, and here we have Europa. Europa is a very, very interesting moon because it actually has what we think is an ocean underneath this icy surface right here. I think this kind of looks like an eyeball when you take a look at it. So here we've got the pupil, we've got the veins coming from it, um, the iris. Um, so this one is Europa and we think there's actually oceans uh, underneath this very, very thick uh, outer ice. And this is some place that we've actually thought about trying to go and visit um, and check out those oceans to see what could possibly be there. Someone said it kind of looks like an onion. And you know what? I think I agree with you. It looks like you could just peel off those icy layers. Um, and maybe this is the, the eye of the onion. So we have Io, Europa, Ganymede, which is the next one we're going to go to. There it is. We're coming up on the dark side of Ganymede here. So let me turn us around to see the light side. And Ganymede is actually sort of a, a rocky moon around, around Jupiter. Um, and it reflects well, quite a bit of light. But it doesn't, it looks a lot like Callisto, the other moon that we're going to visit. But Callisto actually reflects even less light than Ganymede. So it appears even darker. So again, a nice rocky place. And this one is filled with those craters that we see on some of our other planets. So Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, those are the four moons that Galileo Galilei was able to discover in the 1600s. Um, Steve asked, why do we think there is an ocean underneath the ice on Europa? We believe that there is an ocean underneath the ice on Europa because it's close enough to Jupiter that it gets squeezed and pressed by something that we call the tidal forces. So you know how on the Earth we have tides? We have high tide and low tide. The same thing is kind of happening because of the gravitational interaction with Jupiter and its moon Europa. 
Now, the gravitational interaction between the moon and the Earth's oceans is what we're having, what, what is causing the uh, tides that we see on the Earth, but it's actually squeezing our oceans and compressing them, squeezing and stretching. And that squeezing and stretching can actually cause heat. That's why there are active volcanoes on Io. And that's also why we believe that there are, that there's a, an ocean underneath that solid surface on Europa because it's been squeezed and stretched and heated up. Um, and somebody said the um, that uh, our friend Callisto here sort of looks like a Petoskey stone. And I definitely agree. This does look a lot like our moon um, because those white spots that you see on the surface, those are craters. So some, some place where uh, a asteroid or comet or meteoroid has hit the surface and caused a dent in it. So even in the outer part of our solar system, we have uh, craters as well. So we were able to take a look at Jupiter and four of its moons. We're not going to be able to look at all 70, 79 of the moons today. Um, plus, some of them are not very interesting. These are probably the three most interesting. And these are three that you can actually see with a pair of uh, stronger binoculars, as well as um, through a small telescope, if you ever get the chance. All right, so when we take a look at Jupiter, we can see, as we turn around, that it has a small, almost solar system of moons around it as well. So we had Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. So let's go ahead and move on to uh, the next planet in our solar system. So we've talked about this one already. You guys already guessed what this one looks like uh, or what this one was. It's the second largest planet in our solar system, which is, again, the second largest planet in our solar system, which is, it's got rings around it. Yes, I do have a dog in here. She's my roommate slash pet. Um, and sometimes she makes some noise during the program. <laughs> Um, somebody asked, what's the temperature on Jupiter? And that's a really great question. Um, it's in the outer part of our solar system. So the surface temperature is actually fairly low. Um, but we believe that the core is actually not solid and is very, very warm in the middle of it. So we're going to head to Saturn next. That's right. All right. So we're going to head to Saturn, which we know of as the ringed planet. Now, it's not the only planet that has rings. Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune all have rings as well, but Saturn's are the biggest and the brightest. Now, as we approach Saturn, you might be able to see some of these paths around it. These are moons around Saturn. So let's, as we approach, why don't you guess how many moons does Saturn have around it? How many moons do we think Saturn has? How many moons do we think Saturn has? 34, good guess, think higher. David also said 34, 56, 63, 64, Got to think even higher than that. 63, Kate, that is a fantastic guess. 69, it's not quite a million. <laughs> Someone said 72, also a fantastic guess. We continue to find new moons around Saturn all the time. As of today, we're up to 82 moons. 82 moons around Saturn way more than Jupiter. And we're, like I said, we're finding more moons every day. So here we have Saturn. And we can see that, as I turn around, we can see that Saturn does have, yes, these rings around it. These rings are made up of chunks of ice and dust. Largest is about the size of a house. Smallest is about the size of a grain of sand. 
Now, even though the ranks, when we take a look at them, extend for hundreds of millions of miles from Saturn, they're actually only about 30 feet thick. So when we take a look from the edge, they're barely even there. 30 feet is about the height of a three-story building. So the rings are not very thick, made up of chunks of ice and dust. Uh, somebody asked, how big is it? Um, so like I said, the, the rings themselves, hundreds of millions of miles from Saturn and only about 30 feet thick. And uh, it is larger than the planet or it's, it's smaller than the planet Jupiter. Um, Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system. Saturn here is our second largest. Now, somebody asked, why does it have the rings around it? And that's a really fantastic question. These rings were probably formed a long time ago when something got a little bit too close. So a pretty, what it was probably a moon at some point, or maybe even a couple of moons, got a little bit too close to the surface of Saturn. And instead of being, um, instead of staying in orbit like that, they were actually crushed by the gravity of Saturn. They were pulled apart and spread out into the rings that we see today. And that's why we think that we see different ring bands is because it was probably different objects that got in. Jupiter also has rings as does Uranus and Neptune. And we think that all of these rings formed in a very similar way. These rings are also in the same plane of the, re of the orbit of the rest of the moons around Saturn. So again, that's why we think they were formed that way. Um, so the thing that keeps them all in line, um, you guys talked about gravity yesterday, right? So gravity holds the objects in our solar system in orbit around the sun. And the same thing happens around our planet. The gravity holds the moons in orbit around the planets, and they all orbit around in the same plane. So it sort of means that our solar system at one point was a disk, and then has sort of um, condensed down into the plane that we see today. All right, so... We've got a couple of really fantastic questions that are coming up. The rings are made up of chunks of ice and dust. Largest is about the size of a house. Smallest is about the size of a grain of sand. So these are basically just made up of uh, rocks and ice. And the difference in color that we see is how dirty they are. So the brighter of the rings are made up of more ice. The dimmer of the rings are made up of more dirt. Um, David had a really great question. How did they determine the 82 moons belong to Saturn and not a nearby planet? So the way that we know that these moons belong to Saturn and not a nearby planet is because they're all orbiting around Saturn. They're not orbiting around the other planet. There's also a lot of space between the outer uh, planets in our solar system. And so to get close enough to be able to capture one of the moons around a different planet, it would have to be very, very close to it. So one of the things that I want to show you um, is actually a moon around Saturn. And this is one of my favorite moons. A while ago, we sent a spacecraft to Saturn and off of that spacecraft, that Cassini spacecraft, off of that spacecraft, a probe called Huygens made its way to this moon right here. Now, this moon might not look like much, but this actually has it's called Titan, and it has oceans of liquid methane. So this would definitely be an oil baron's dream. 
you can also see that it sort of looks patchworked on the surface. And that's just because we have higher resolution images of some of the areas than we do of some of the other because of Cassini and the Huygens probe. But because of that probe, we were able to discover that, like I said, uh, Titan has oceans of liquid methane. And that, I think, is super cool. Now, someone asked, uh, does Jupiter have volcanoes? And that's a really great question, but it turns out that Jupiter doesn't actually have a solid surface. So there wouldn't be anything for those volcanoes to live on. But remember about Io, its closest moon, that does have volcanoes. So those volcanoes are very active on the surface of Io. So there aren't any active volcanoes on the planet Jupiter the, itself, but there are a lot of active volcanoes on the moon nearby. All right, so we today we've been able to talk about Jupiter and our ringed planet Saturn. Does anybody have any questions about something we talked about today or something that we might, or, or some other things that you might be curious about? Well, while we're waiting for some of our questions to come in, uh, let's take this time to thank our sponsors. Of course we'd like to. So we are very thankful to our sponsors like the Ford Motor Company Fund and Denso. They allow us to bring these programs and really all of our um, distance learning and virtual programs that we provide for you for free. Uh, our free programs include things like Echo Live, but also our virtual watch parties of these amazing NASA launches, which is going to happen again. Um, like we said, this Saturday, we will have another watch party if that one gets postponed, we'll see you back here on Sunday. You really can't get enough of us. And that will be seven days straight of virtual programming for us, which is super duper exciting if that does happen. So even if maybe the launch doesn't go on Saturday and goes on Sunday, that means that we'll have gotten to see each other for seven days straight, which I think is super cool and exciting. Um, of course, if you're looking for at-home science activities, you can check the Michigan Science Center's website. It's right here at the bottom of this slide. We've got all sorts of at-home science experiments. I know Paulette is working on some rocket-themed activities that we can um, show you on Saturday in honor of the launch coming up. And we will definitely make sure we have all those resources posted for you on our website as well. Um, what do you think, Paulette? See any good questions coming in? I do. I see some fantastic questions. Helena wants to know, how do moons get attracted to the planet? And like I said, fantastic question because um, it's because of the gravity. So all objects have gravity. All objects have that attractive force that we talked about yesterday. So even I have gravity. Although that gravity is pretty small compared to a really big, massive object like uh, Jupiter or Saturn or our sun. So those bigger massive objects have moons orbiting around them because they kind of were floating by and all of a sudden got caught in the gravity around them and started orbiting around those planets. Um, and you'll notice that the larger the planet, the more moons that it has because the stronger the gravity that it has around it. Um, somebody asked, um, I'll get to the question in Zoom in just a moment. Um, I got, uh, there's a question about um, the gas planets versus the solid planets. So we call the gas planets Jovian planets, Jupiter-like or gas giants. And we call the rocky planets, the terrestrial planets, our, um, we call those our, um, Earth-like planets or our rocky planets. So inner planets are rocky or terrestrial, and our outer planets are gas or Jovian planets. Um, so the difference between them um, is the, the thickness of the atmosphere, basically. And for the most part, our outer planets, our gas giants, have rings around them, and our smaller rocky planets don't have rings around them. But that's mostly to do with the size of the planet more than anything else. Um, somebody also asked, 
Um, can we do rocket science? So tomorrow uh, on the news will be, or not tomorrow, uh, Saturday, uh, we'll be probably doing some straw rockets, which is a lot of fun. And I'll keep that rocket science theme in mind for the future. Now, we do know that the rocket launch is coming up uh, on Saturday and we were and we missed the rocket launch yesterday because uh, of the astronaut safety. There have been times in the past that the safety of the astronauts was not necessarily looked into or taken after um, as well as we'd hoped. There have been accidents in the past, which is why we're so very careful when we launch astronauts into space because we don't want to uh, we don't want anyone to lose, lose their life over going out into space. Um, so there have been a couple of explosions. There have been the Challenger explosion and the Columbia, um, but uh, we have learned from those times and we are now trying to make sure that our astronauts completely remain safe um, as much as possible moving forward. Um, so. If we don't have any other questions, I want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in today and learning about Jupiter and Saturn with me. Thanks so much, Paulette. And we will see you again on Saturday for that launch party. Again, that will be hosted on the Michigan Science Center's Facebook page. Paulette will be there in the chat feature. She'll be giving us updates that she finds, and she'll also be answering your questions live. Um, so if you are wanting to join that, check back here on Saturday. The watch party should start at about 2.30 p.m. And so we'll have about an hour to watch together, listen to all the preparation that goes into that launch um, before the launch is scheduled to take place at 3.22 p.m. So we hope we'll see you back here tomorrow for more Echo Live and then on Saturday for another watch party with Paulette. Thanks, Paulette. And thank you everyone for joining. We'll see you